All right, welcome to another video from the Outdoor Analyst. Today I've got a, uh, well, an interesting one for you. I'm not going to call it fun because I actually um, got really excited. Um, essentially, I uh, did a nice fire yesterday for the fam. And uh, I took these three knives out just to kind of put them through their paces a little more. Just to do a lot of feather sticking, some splitting, some batoning. And uh, just really to go through the difference of... And just personally, again, a Scandivax, a full height, or not full height, but a very thin convex, and then a very thin V-edge. And I'm going to tell you, I was incredibly excited from pretty much all of the performances from these knives. One, I've been using this awesome Barker for Scandi ever since I got it in. It's been just slicing everything. It's done an incredible job for me. And as a Scandivex actually works out really well, it feathers incredibly well but it also gives you the ability to dig in just a little bit deeper i feel like and get some bigger feathers if you want to very much like a full scandy does this knife was great for doing little little feathering making feather sticks splitting small amounts of kindling and that's what i was doing and i pulled out my wonderful ex2 ext2 hunter this is not my first time with this type of knife. This is my second one, but this knife is just so thin at the edge. I'm just gonna absolutely admit, this was the best feather sticker. It's a thinner at the edge than even the Forest Scandi is. So when it came to feather sticks, as far as performance from the blade, this topped it. Now handle-wise, it wasn't as comfortable as the Forest Scandi, just by a hair. Just because ah, you can get a little closer to the edge, it's a little thicker up here on the forest scandy. And, and that just gives you a little more comfort to be completely honest with you. So, really did enjoy the performance of this though. The big surprise was honestly the White River Knives uh, Ursus 45. This is a V edge and the entire time I was working with this knife, um, and, all, and I was just essentially thinking, this is an incredible performing knife one split wood just great no issues even the coating held up very very well it also feathered almost like a convex this is so thin you almost don't even know it's a v-grind it is incredible now after all my last video going through um just wanted to know if this was a kind of a lemon essentially as far as fit and finish the answer is i'm gonna say white river knives their fit and finish is not as good as people think you can just look at all the comments, and they're probably 50-50 of people saying it's perfectly flush on their knife all the way around, or it's perfectly raised all the way around, or some people that are kind of like mine, a little 50-50. Um, the truth is, this is raised in the back, and it's mostly raised in the middle, flush up here, flush up there. The truth is, that's bad quality control, because the fact that this is not equal on mine and that other people are getting the opposite of mine is just kind of ridiculous. Like some people are getting perfectly flush. Some people are getting perfectly raised. I believe it's actually supposed to be proud perfectly all the way around. I think that's how White River has it set up officially. Now, I tried contacting them. I've heard nothing back. Uh, we've been over a week here. That's fine. Even like ergonomically, I, this was feeling great. It was doing a fantastic job. I do, I do feel the scales out there. To be completely honest, I like the handle of the Bark Rivers better, just because they're smooth. They're not, um, you know, proud in some places. Did that give me any hot spots? It did not. Was I noticing it the entire time? Do I think if I put more than you know an hour out there just working? Yeah, I would have noticed it. But my honest thoughts coming out from that wonderful time getting that set up was this is an incredible knife as a matter of fact i've never known a v-edge to feather as well as this because it is so thin on the edge you barely even know you have that you know secondary bevel it wasn't till honestly today that i noticed some issues uh, as i'm gonna get really close up here i have edge damage uh, quite a bit of edge damage up here uh, which is a little annoying considering I was just, yeah, I was doing batoning hardwoods and, and feathering hardwoods. But there's quite a bit of edge damage, um, which can happen. Let's, let's be real. When you have a super thin edge, even in CPM3V, it can be chippy. I've had that even with LT Wrights. I've had my awesome Scandies from LT Wright um, be chippy. And right here, I've got some edge damage. I've got some chips. 
which is a little frustrating. Why is that though? Well, because this is so thin at the edge and it's not convex. There you go, now you can see them. Uh, that put chip marks in there. It just wasn't tough enough. And we're talking about CPM 3V. Did that happen to any of these doing the exact same work, even in some cases the exact same sticks and logs? Nope, it is perfectly smooth. Why is that? Probably because these are convex and they have a little more meat behind the edge, which makes them technically tougher. Now this is CPM 3V, this is Magna Cut. I would even say this is a thinner edge than that, but because most likely because it is convex versus just a V edge at the very, very edge there, uh, it held up better. So yeah, that's pretty, I'm gonna say kind of disappointing yet not surprising because of how thin this is. Seriously, this almost acts like a convex. That's how crazy ground this is. So, did they grind it too thin? Maybe. I'm gonna sharpen this out, but I just wanted to show that before I did, because I was literally just about to sharpen these. I kind of was doing some knife maintenance, went through linseed oil this baby again after using it, because it's been about a month. It's on its uh, fifth or sixth coat now. And, you know, put uh, a couple of sheaths through these things through some uh, beeswax, so they're drying up. They'll be nice and ready for the season. But I, I just, uh, yeah, I was doing maintenance for the for the day essentially on there. And then I noticed, man, there's some chipping on there. So yeah, kind of a bummer. Do I think that's a quality issue? I don't think so. I think it's just uh, the fact that this is so crazy thin. And also the fact that, you know, I do nothing but hardwoods. Um, welcome to the Midwest. I'm, we're all like that. Everybody over here is doing that. Uh, nobody lives with pine. Who, who wants to make a fire out of pine all the time? Burns too quick. Either way, yeah, just wanted to let that be known that, yeah, I'm not I'm not so super hyped on, on honestly, white river knives at this point. Um, did this perform very, very well? Yes, I'm not getting to the performance. I'm just saying I don't think I like their design and their quality control so much because their handle scales, even though now I know that I'm pretty sure these are meant to be proud all the way around, they're not equal. And even if they were equal, I'd even be more annoyed. Thank goodness it's slightly flush up here and kind of slightly flush, uh, eh, maybe right, right there. There's at least that. So that's kind of a small consolation for me. Do I plan on picking up any more White River knives? I'm gonna be honest, no. Even though this performs very, very well, I'm gonna sharpen that out. Do I think it's gonna have any issues? Nope, not after that. I might end up even trying to slightly convex this a little more, just so it has a little more meat behind the edge in the future. That may be a plan for me. But otherwise, the coating held up well. The knife performed better than I expected because of how thin that was. Did it cause some damage? It did. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is, honestly. Um, I would rather have, I think, in all honesty, just, just a, a pure convex when it comes to a CPM 3V camp knife at this point. This did well, but it also proved that it was, in my mind, it proved to me as of yesterday, just, you know, that it's it's a weaker edge than a convex. We all know this, but here it is in practice. Two kind of similar size knives, very thin edges, one held up a little stronger than the other. Um, and this one was just, I think this was a little less thin than all of them, so I don't think it's going to have any issues whatsoever. Uh, it was just doing, just beasting through wood, which is exactly what it's meant to do. I can't wait to do some spoons here soon, honestly, with this sucker. It's kind of my next plan for hopefully, well, you know, probably not next weekend, but maybe soon. We'll, we'll get it in here at some point. Either way, before I sharpen this, I just wanted to let that be known. Had some issues, got a little chippy. It's maybe just too thin, just too freaking thin, honestly, even for CPM 3V. And I know what a lot of people have, I've chopped, I've chopped down trees with knives with CPM 3V. That's not what we're talking about here, though. That's with usually a, a much... A much thicker convex edge. This is just so thin. Think of it like if you've ever had a Scandi, and I have, and I've had the same exact same thing happen. So it's very, very similar to that. That's just, that's why this performs so well. It also means I would probably not get this in Magna Cut, nor would I get this in the S35VN version. I would only get this in 3V because of how thin this is and because of just seeing, you know, the performance that I had with it. It needs to either be convexed or maybe even, I don't know, just thickened up a little on that edge, on that secondary bevel. 
because that just, uh, that's going to cause some issues. And it did. So good to know for me, I'm not really, you know, on the hype train of White River. I think just, just off the comments of my own last video and seeing so many differences from, from people's experiences, and I have a still small sample, and I still couldn't get more than, you know, a few on each side that said, yeah, I've got a great, I've got a perfect one. Their perfect one was sometimes different. Sometimes their perfect ones were perfectly flush, and sometimes they were perfectly proud. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, they're just not consistent. So, great performing knife. Probably the best performing V-Edge because it was so thin. But that caused me some issues. So I'm going to go fix those now, and then get on with my uh, what's left of the weekend here. So, that's kind of just an update. I had a great time. These, all, these knives all performed well. Just had a little bit of an issue with this one. So, all right, have a fantastic day. Like, subscribe if you like this content. I'm going to still keep going. I mean, there's still more to know about this knife. Let me see if I can maybe even fix the edge and have a good solution for it in the long term. All right, I will catch you all on the next one.